Global Protect Remote Access VPN Portal. Okay, everyone, in this video, we're going to take a look at configuring the Global Protect Portal. And this is step one and involves enabling the portal. And the portal is it's just a web front end that it's enabled on the Palo Alto's outside interface or the external facing interface to allow your remote users to download the Global Protect client. Once they install that Global Protect client on their machines or endpoints, they can establish a VPN tunnel to the environment. So they can do a remote access VPN connection to the Global Protect Gateway. Once we enable or once we're ready to configure the portal, we need to create an authentication profile and that authentication profile will be attached to the Global Protect Portal. So anyone that is member of that authentication profile, either you select local users or at your remote LDAP or Active Directory server, any user that belongs to the security group that is allowed to go to the Global Protect Portal will be able to sign in and download the, the client. So let's go ahead and configure the Global Protect Portal. Okay, in order for us to enable the Global Protect Portal, we need to configure some prerequisite. This will allow the portal to be enabled on that outside interface. We need to create a local VPN user for this example and also create a VPN users group. So any member that would like to have remote access VPN to the environment will be able to do so once it's added into the VPN users group. We then need to continue creating an authentication profile and what that's gonna do, it's going to select the type of authentication that we want to use on our Global Protect Portal. So the Global Protect Portal, basically a website that allows the end user to download that Global Protect client. And we need to tell what type of user it's allowed to log in into that portal. And we can then point our VPN users group to be the group that is allowed to access the portal. Once we create that authentication profile, we need to create that certificate signing request. In this case, if we want, by the way, this is a recommended way of going, you should definitely generate a certificate signing request and upload that to your external CA authority. In this case, if you have, for example, GoDaddy or DigiCert, have that CSR generated on the Palo Alto, then signed by your external authority. Or in this case, for this demonstration, we're just gonna do a self-signed certificate. Once we have that, then we can attach that certificate into a SSL or TLS service profile. What that's gonna do is gonna tell the portal what certificate it's gonna use for that web front end. SSL port 443, it's the port that is going to be listening for users that want to hit the portal, then they need to have a certificate that they need to trust. There's a, a certificate that is put in front of the portal in order for us to have a secure connection to our environment. And finally, we are going to configure and enable the Global Protect Portal once we have all those prerequisites created and enabled. So let's go ahead and configure each step and let's enable the Global Protect Portal. Okay, so once you're inside your Palo Alto, so once you logged in into your PA, you're going to create a local user, and this is, will be the user that is going to be allowed to hit that Global Protect portal. So let's go ahead and click on users, and you can see I already have a VPN user created. This is basically a local user, and this user will be added into the VPN users group. We go into the users group. I already have a VPN users group. You can see here that I just allowed the VPN user one into the VPN users group. Let's go ahead and create an authentication profile. We'll click authentication profile. So we're still on device authentication profile and we'll click add. And let's call this the global protect auth profile. So we label this global protect authentication profile and the type. This is where we can select Either we can go local, so you remember we'll configure a local VPN users group. So in this case, we're going to use a local database, but we have more options. We can do LDAP, Radius, TACX, uh, SAML, or Kerberos. In our case, we're just going to do a local database. Local database. And because it's local, we don't need to add a domain prefix to the authentication profile. And this is what the Palo Alto is going to look for the actual user input. So if we go on to advanced, and here we're going to allow that particular group into the global protect portal via this profile. So you can see here, I just click add on the allow list and I'm going to add my VPN users group. We'll press okay. 
and we are done for the authentication profile. So we're set with the auth profile. Now we're going to create a certificate. We need to generate a certificate that it's going to be attached to the Global Protect portal. So let's go ahead and click certificate. Under certificate management, we'll go to certificates. We'll click generate and you're going to be presented with this window where it's going to ask you if you have a local or an external issuing your certificate. In our case, we're just going to have a local uh, certificate. We're going to call this Global Protect Portal Cert. Okay. Common name. And this is a very important item because we're just doing a cell sign certificate. I'm just going to add a um, generic name. In theory, you should definitely add this with the public facing DNS record. So in case, for example, you want people to connect to a new URL where they're going to be able to download that client, they can do it with a friendly name instead of having a, an IP address. So in our case, imagine the scenario where I want my company to uh, download that client via remote remote.company.com. So that will be the website and I type company as my name of the company. So you can type your own company name. I'm just calling this remote.company.com. So every user that wants to have remote access and needs to download the client, it will tell them, hey, just go to, to this website. They can pull or they can retrieve that Global Protect client. Signed by, well, in this case, because we're not going to be signing a certificate against a external authority, we're just going to make ourselves a certificate authority. So the Palo Alto is basically going to do a self-signed certificate for this demonstration. And again, make sure that you don't go self-signed certificate for public facing web services. That's, that's the no, no. You definitely need to have a, an external authority issue certificate. So make sure that this is just demonstration. Okay. And, uh, this is where you can change the algorithm. You can put the encryption bit. Uh, you can select your digest, etc. So I'm just going to click generate and you can see that the Palo Alto has successfully generated the certificate and the key pair. And now we have a certificate and it's showing valid expiration. And this is the expiration date. Okay. So now we have the certificate. Now we need to create an SSL TLS service profile where we're going to point that certificate to. We're going to call this global protect portal service profile. And here we're going to select our previously made certificate. So there you go. I am attaching the certificate and I'm going to tell that I want to negotiate TLS version one, one or anything that is above one that once. And this is how you can tell the Palo Alto. I want to negotiate this particular encryption protocol. So I want to have TLS version one, one as my minimal protocol to negotiate between my client and then anything that is above that. We'll press OK. We have the certificate attached to the service profile. Now that we have that, we should be good to configure the Global Protect portal. We're going to go onto network and we're going to click Global Protect. So you can see here under network, I have interfaces. So right below, you're going to see the subsection of Global Protect. And in there, you're going to see the portal. We're going to click on portals and we're going to create our first Global Protect portal. Uh, that's my name. And I'm going to select my outside interface. In this case, it's interface Ethernet 1 slash 1. Now I'm going to select an IPv4 address, and this is the address that is going to be used to establish a connection to our portal. And I'm going to select my public facing IP, and you can see this is a private IP. Uh, and the reason why it's showing as a private IP is because this firewall is running as a virtual firewall in Azure. So I have a cloud Palo Alto firewall running in Azure, and basically the, the Palo Alto is going to show a, a private IP but I actually have a secondary public IP attached in my Azure resource group. You can see here, I am on my Microsoft Azure account. So I have a Palo Alto deploy on the cloud. And what I had to do was basically on my outside interface. And you can see the subnet is the untrust subnet. And you can see that dot one dot four. And that was the IP of my external facing IP on the Palo Alto. I just attached a public IP and this is a real public IP that the end users will use to get to the global protect portal this is a very good way to deploy a firewall in the cloud you just basically deploy either pay as you go a palo alto or you can bring your own license and you can deploy the palo alto on the cloud i just want to show you this as a an example or what am i doing to present this section and have a true testing environment so we can know that from the outside we can definitely reach the global protect portal Okay, so now that you saw that private IP is actually attached to a public IP. Appearance. 
we can let the Palo Alto use the factory default portal login page, but we can also customize that. So if you want to customize, you can create a custom portal login page. In this case, we're not going to show that, but you can definitely customize this portal page to whatever your environment suits. Or you want to customize it to have it more graphical or something that is more related to your environment, you can do so. For in our case, I'm just going to leave it as the default. Same with the landing. So once you log in, you're going to get presented with the website or the web page that you're going to use to download that Global Protect client. And uh, this is the default landing page. Authentication. Okay, we're now going to select that SSL and TLS service profile. You remember that we created a profile? This is where we're going to choose that profile, which will have already that certificate attached. And once we have the profile, we need to add our authentication profile. So remember, we created authentication profile and we added the VPN users group. So we'll click on add. And we'll click here this is the auth profile our authentication profile for the portal and we're going to allow any os version to authenticate and we're then going to attach that authentication profile that we created earlier that has the vpn users group okay and the global protect app login screen this is what you can do to customize what is the label on the actual portal so what's going to show the end user where they what they need to type in order for them to have access to the environment so you can customize those that information that is shown on the portal an authentication message i am actually going to customize this so you can see that we can definitely customize the page okay i'm just adding here authorized users only and i should see that once i enable the portal we'll click ok and you also have agents that can also be attached to the portal. But in our case, we're just going to do a normal, uh, very basic portal. So you can have agents and attach it to specific external gateways that will also serve as part of the global protect portal. And I can have clientless VPNs. In this case, we're just, we're going to use the global protect client. So I'm not going to be doing a presentation on clients VPN, but you, if you want a specific service that not necessarily needs to have a global protect client, it just need to have a TLS SSL connection to your on-prem using the portal, they can do so. And satellite, you can definitely connect multiple instances onto this particular portal configuration. I am not going to proceed to do that. It's basically creating the portal so you can take a look at how it's configured and it's very, very, very straightforward. Uh, we're gonna press okay. Now that we have the portal, guess what? We just need to enable it and we should be good to go. Okay, so I'm committing my changes and then we'll test and see how that goes. Okay, so if you remember, I was on my Azure Palo Alto and I do have a public IP that is attached to the private IP that is sitting on the outside interface on the cloud Palo Alto. So I have that public IP, so I should be able to hit that public IP and hit the portal. And boom, there you go. So I do have the Global Protect portal and it's asking me for a username and password. Let's go ahead and type that username and password. And sure enough, so here we go. We have now the capability of downloading the Global Protect client straight out of the actual portal. So we have the link to download the agent, and this is basically the Global Protect client. And once we install that on our endpoints, we should be able to establish a Global Protect connection to the gateway. If I want to download it for a Mac format, I can do it, or Windows 32 and 64-bit. So if I click one of them, there you go. I am now downloading the Global Protect agent from my Azure Palo Alto firewall. Okay, one last thing. Now that we know that the Global Protect portal is actually working, we need to also discuss that the Global Protect agent is updated on a regular basis. So once you click on the device, you're going to scroll right below almost at the end, and you're going to see the Global Protect client link or section. We'll click here. And this is all the versions that are available on our Palo Alto or our Global Protect client. If you can see here, it shows my version size and the date that it was released along with the uh, check mark if it was downloaded and it's actually active. So if you have this particular check mark enabled, so you have this 3.00 as your activated version, it's the one that is going to be shown on the Global Protect portal. So say, for example, you want to upgrade and you can see we're pretty much behind the, the latest and greatest. We just need to download the base of the next version that we want to go to. In our case, we want to go to 4.0. So we just click download. And we should have now the version 4.0 on our Palo Alto. Once we have a version 4.0 and we just downloaded that from 
the Palo Alto's cloud service. So once we download that version, we can then say, well, I want to upgrade our portal and our clients to use 4.0. We'll click on activate and we'll click yes. Once we activate, then the Global Protect portal will start serving 4.0. If we want to upgrade to a newer version, we just do the same. We'll select the base and then we'll select any increments inside the base. So for example, if I want to upgrade 4.0, you know, from 4.0.0, and we want to upgrade everyone to the latest version and the base, which the base in this case is 4.00, and the latest version in 4.0, or the last version in 4.0, it was 4.08. We can then select download, and now we should have 4.08. And then once it finishes download, then we can activate the same way we did before. Let's wait until it finishes, we'll click close, and we'll activate. We should have 4.08 as our enable client and you can keep going up to the five if you want but now the global protect portal will be serving 408 okay everyone so we just finished our global protect portal session in our next video we're going to enable the actual global protect remote access vpn gateway thank you for watching